Experience Near Responses Debrief with Sandra Collins and Gina Ko. Why don't we just debrief that for a second? Sure. <laughs> so that, you know, students can see why it was a little bit, you know, jumpy or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Gina, that was interesting because um, you knew that I was setting out to demonstrate experience near versus experience distant responses. And so um, it was tricky because you weren't really sure when I was doing one or the other. And I was kind of surprised when I offered up the one about um, not good enough. Yes. And I was surprised actually that I was trying to go like far outside the box here. And then you actually kind of related to that one. So that yeah. was kind of an interesting, um, it's an interesting example in and of itself. What was that like for you? <laughs> that was well, that was kind of um uh well, it was a funny moment because I was thinking is Sandra trying to go like, like demonstrate experience near or experience distant but in the part of what she said really spoke to me right what you said Sandra where sometimes I don't feel good enough so that was it was really I, I'm trying to grab a word cool interesting to experience I guess Mm. Yeah, because mm. a part of cognitive flexibility is it could be it can be both and right. Right. Maybe sometimes I feel not good enough in certain moments, and sometimes I feel like I am good enough. So, right. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I found it hard to go experience distant, and maybe that's because I know you well. <laughs> and so you know, it's harder for me to put something like far out there that I that I think isn't going to fit, but that was an interesting, a really interesting example of um, thinking that wouldn't fit. And then um, you did actually grab onto something there. So I, guess I, was gonna, I was gonna actually make a suggestion, but then we jumped right in. I was gonna say, maybe say something like, so Gina, you have very low self-esteem. <laughs> like that would be very far, a distant experience, distant. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So if we were going to generate some some um, reflex just in this brainstorm here, that's a good one that you have very low self-esteem. That would have been the one that you would have experienced as experience distant. Mm -hmm. um, another one I think you would have experienced as, ex as you know, not fitting for you would be um, that you're not very motivated, Gina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if I had thought of that one and found a way to fit that in, that would have um prompted that kind of reaction right like yeah, no that's, that's not true that would be not fitting for me and if if my therapist keeps on going down that track and I'll be really rethinking do I want to stay with this therapist if mm -hmm. many of those moments are experienced distant mm -hmm. yeah. which is maybe part of the moral of the story out of this um video is that um, it's about the relationship and paying attention. So you and I are watching each other and seeing, does this fit? Does this not fit? And self-correcting as we go along um, when we're in the role of the therapist. And I think what you just said about um, leaving a therapist who doesn't do that self-correction, who doesn't listen to the verbal and nonverbal feedback from the client and sticks to some idea that they have that isn't a fit, that's when you end up with a relationship rupture. So that the rupture, and then if it again it happens time and time again, th th those ruptures may not be repairable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas these small examples, and we've had them in a number of the videos that we've done where a word doesn't quite fit for one or the other of us when it happens in the context of this safe um, and respectful relationship that we have, then we can say to the other person, no, that's not quite right. But maybe if we tweak it a little bit here, it will take us, you know, it'll be more reflective of what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And, and Sandra, I so appreciate when, when, when clients tell me that when I'm trying to reflect or trying to co-create and I would say, oh, so you feel some guilt, for example, and they will look at me and they'll look up and they'll take pause and then they'll say, actually, no, it's not guilt, you know, it's mm -hmm. something different. It might be something like shame, you know, when they can correct and tell me mm -hmm. that's incredible right it shows that 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 the space between us it's a safe space and they feel heard and they can correct me mm -hmm. and it's part of that process of co-constructing the understanding of mm -hmm. what's actually going on for them yes yeah